Now let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Moore, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. And I can tell you, time just goes so quick. It's hard to believe. It feels like I was just speaking with Tim. Well, I was because I called him a few hours ago. <laughs> but I'm talking about on the air. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, I sent you a bunch of charts. I don't know if we'll be able to. You, get cer you them all. certainly did. I like um, it, man. No. <laughs> awesome, so, man. Okay, so what shot do you want to start with? Well, it, you know, we got the equities and we got the gold. So we whatever you want to do, way. man. Pardon? Tell, just tell me which shot to start with. Should I start with one? Uh, yeah, I just start with one. Okay. Uh, yep. Um. So anyhow, uh, chart one, this is kind of a, you always got to look at the bigger picture and you work backwards. Yes. So you got to look at, you know, what the bigger picture is doing. And uh, anyhow, the bottom window is the VIX. Yes. And when I did this chart, it was 13.29. Anything below 17, usually you're okay. When the market, when the VIX starts to get above 17, that's when uh, ugly things can happen. And uh, so the VIX, relatively speaking, is in a safe area. You know, you can have pullbacks, but not nothing really significant. Yes. And the uh, next window higher is the SPX VIX ratio. Okay. And so that's a ratio. So it, it uh, uh, moves up and down with the S&P. So if that ratio is rising, that's usually a, a good sign. But if you got the S&Ps going up, and you got that ratio going down, which off to the far, uh, far left of the chart from uh, 2018 yep. all the way to 2020. I, I, po I pointed out times when the uh, S&Ps were making higher highs and this ratio was making lower highs. That's pretty amazing. And every it's... time it... Pardon? No, it's just amazing. You know, as you're looking at this chart, folks, Tim, you can see the five red arrows, man. Pretty amazing. I know. Cool. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's, it's really... Uh, uh, picked out, you know, even that COVID crash, you know, the market was going up, I think it was in March 2020. Yes. And this ratio was going going way down. It's really obvious uh, how that ratio worked. And even though uh, there was, you know, that kicked off the news and obviously the market crashed. And back in 2021, late 2021, early 2022, you got the ratio, or the SPs making higher highs, you got the ratio making lower highs. And so now you get over the current places, you got uh, the S&P is basically testing the July highs right now. And you got the ratio making higher highs. Right. Well, something similar happened back in April, May of this year. You got uh, the, the S&Ps were kind of testing its previous highs. Yes. Uh, I think around 41, 4200. And that ratio is breaking out to new highs. You can have little pullbacks, but uh, in general, this is bullish. So the intermediate term on the bigger time frames so far is bullish, okay. according to the VIX below 17 and the SPX VIX ratio. So, But we did get out yesterday uh, um, as yes. far as uh, my trading is. It just, uh, I got out, and we'll show you the reason why I got out. Okay. But anyhow, the bigger trend up, um, I guess if you're long, you can you know, uh, the odds point to that at some point we're going to make a higher high than where we are right now. Uh, but you may have to suffer through some sort of a pullback before that next higher high comes. Yes. Uh, so uh, so, so just to re reiterate, up. folks, okay, because yeah. you've been following Tim and myself. So Tim got in really close to these lows. They got out yesterday before the close, okay, and he made over 10, and, was it 10.4% 10, 10, 10 or something, Tim, right? Was it was yeah, a monster? 10.5 to it was uh, a monster and a number. Percent. Yeah, monster number. Okay, so, so should we go to the next shot? I didn't get near the low. If you go back and look, March or October 27th was a low, and that's the day I went long on the close. Love, that's right, so, that Friday. That's right. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm and the market that gapped up the next yep. day and, and uh, just yep. kind of kept going. That's right. There's always, as uh, far as uh, indicators go, if you get one indicator, that's good. If you can get two indicators, yes. that's even better to match what you're trying to do. So you, you want to, you know, if you got an indicator that's 80% right, and you got another indicator that's 80% right, but they're not related at all, then that increases your odds of success. Yes. So on, on, on page or chart two, 
Okay. I got another chart. Now, uh, what's, what's actually, cool here, folks, this, uh, what, what, what's happening here is you've been following us, right? You know, you got the all the information about when we were coming into lows. Now what you're going to be getting done is you're going to get information coming into highs, which is so cool because that's when you know that you have an amazing system that you can go both ways, okay? That's, that's what it comes down to because we know. Anyway, go ahead with the next chart, Tim. Thank you. All right. I'm on page or chart two, I got two uh, light blue indicators. Yes. Or light to, uh, light blue uh, shaded areas. And the bottom window is just the SPY, the next window higher. Is the VIX uh, rate? Uh, it says the VVIX to VVIX to VVIX ratio. Okay. So it's the VIX and the VIX of the VIX. So, well, what's the VIX? VIX is actually measures the premiums of options uh, on the um, S and P's. So when the VIX goes up, that means the option premiums are going up. So what's the VIX? Well, the VIX anticipates. The rising of the VIX, uh, the VVIX anticipation, uh, anticipates the rise of the VIX. <laughs> so, uh, I hear the music. That's so, cool. Just stay, just I don't want to get too complicated here. No, no, it's cool, man. You, you're doing great. Just stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 332, NASDAQ's down 116, S&P's a 7.5. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Dow up uh, 333, Nasdaq up, uh, Nasdaq down uh, 111, S&P's off 7. We're talking about it, managed to Tim Wood. And I have the second chart up here, Tim. Right. Well, this, uh, the middle window is the uh, VIX to VVIX ratio. Oh. And normally when it's trending down, the market's trending up. And uh, pretty much the S&P's are actually uh, uh, testing its uh, August or late July or August highs is kind of actually moving sideways here. And uh, the point I was trying to make, this ratio in general is making lower lows as the S&Ps are basically testing its previous highs. Um, didn't quite draw this chart right. But in general, it's another uh, intermediate term bullish sign. You can have short-term pullbacks here, but this, this, other, this other ratio gives another bullish bigger picture. So, uh, anyhow, let's flip to chart three. I think this, that was, I think you just went over chart three. Okay, except chart three says at the top, VIX slash VVIX ratio. Is that chart three? Uh, the top uh, yeah. VVIX to VVX ratio? A SPY versus VVIX. A T. All right, I must have got the charts to scoot up. What, what do you got for chart three? Uh, just tell me what, what chart three says at the top. I can find it. I, but, um, but chart three is just the VIX. Yep. So wherever the VIX is, just uh, okay. it'd be the, the just the chart of the VIX on the top, very top left. Top left. Okay, I think that was chart two. Okay. All right, did I, give, uh, did I mess them up? So th the chart goes back to mid-2022. I kind of, it, what happens, Tim, when I'm on here, I, the, 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 the screen's away in front of me, so I have a hard time seeing the smaller print. Yeah, um, that's, that's called getting old, Tom. Yeah, I, well, I'm blind in one <laughs> yeah, eye, so. I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> um, let, let's do this. Let, let's go. Uh, we got to get people on the same page here. Let's go to the right. chart that says at the top, SPY, VIX, VVIX ratio, and then the daily VIX and the VIX higher lows. The, is that the one we? Is that the one you just did? Yeah, that's the one we just did. Okay, that's all right. Then let's um, go to the next one. One second. How about chart four? That, See, what's chart four say? That's the TLT VIX. VVIX? Right. Okay. All right. We'll go to that. Okay. Let's cool. go to that Thank one. you. Okay. All right. The, the point I was trying to make, basically I was trying to confirm that the bigger trend is up, which is all those other charts. Yes. And the reason why I got out yesterday is because of this TLT VVIX ratio. Right. And that's the reason why I got out yesterday. Right. So what I'm saying is the bigger trend is up, the short-term trend at best is sideways and probably going to see a pullback in the coming days. And the reason why I got out yesterday is because of the TLT BVIX ratio. Yeah, this is like and, an early warning. I kind of like it. I dig that. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. So, anyhow, back in July, the market was going up. Yeah. And 
uh, making higher highs, and this ratio is making lower highs. And if you remember, on the radio, we got you know, I used to say that we got out in July. No, at that I high, remember this well, right, man. Right yeah, it. big time. Yeah, and I, I showed you that ratio. And that's the reason why I got out in that ratio. Yes. And also, I said, going into the October 27th low, yep. um, this is one of the reasons why I got back in the market, because this ratio is going to make higher lows while the SP is making lower lows. Right, right. And so now, you got the ratio, or you got the SPs kind of going sideways up a little bit. Yeah. More or less sideways. And this ratio is going right through the floor. Right. I mean, it's it, it, it was, gone, yeah. gone straight down. Yeah. So that's a bearish divergence. That's one of the reasons why I nice. got out of the market. I get it. And yep. sometimes, uh, you know, you can you can go. These divergences can last several days, even a couple of weeks. If you look at the July high, most of July was showing a divergence. So I kind of just waited, and then got lucky. Got close to the highs, but uh, for now, you know, the market upside. It's just having a lot of trouble, and we're also running into the July highs there. So yes. we're not seeing a sign of strength through those highs, and we got this ratio, TLT VIX ratio, going straight down while the S&Ps are kind of holding up the highs. So to me, that's a bearish sign. So what it's going to do, well, my opinion, flip to chart five. Okay. And uh, this is the same thing, but the chart's kind of blowing up. Yep. If you look at the bottom window there, you can kind of see the versions. The S P has been going sideways yes. since it looks like about November 20th. Sideways maybe up a little bit since November 20th. And if you look at, at that ratio, the ratio made a high around November 20th. And since then, it's been trending down. And uh, I did a Fibonacci relationship from the October low up to the, the recent high. And uh, a, a uh, twenty-one or thirty-eight point two percent retracement comes exactly where that gap is, and that gap is right around that four 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 area. I think that's probably where we're going to go. So it's only a thirty-eight point two percent retracement. There's no guarantee we'll get there. I'm not a. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. I don't really have enough evidence to go short. Right. And I may not go short because, um, you know, the market. Doesn't have to go down. No, uh, for sure. You know, it could, it just could go sideways. And and, and I just what put it, up this, this. So as you're watching Tiger TV, folks, you can see what Tim's talking about. I mean, it's amazing that that gap is right at 38 percent, man. I mean, just like right on. I and it's yeah, a big it's gap. Right so smack on it. It's it's a and it's, it is a big gap, folks. Okay, so the real bottom line is that what's interesting, to Tim, today is that you know the Nasdaq's getting hit. And the, the gap inside of the NASDAQ, I mean, it's going right after it right now. You know, this is the NDX 100, rather. Um, you know, that's off 128 points. And that gap actually starts at uh, uh, 15,726. Uh, and we actually hit 15,825. Uh, yeah, so it's still 100 points off of this. But, but I, we get the gist. I, this is really cool, man. Okay. So, yeah, so we get the gist. And a lot of times, you know, the NASDAQ kind of leaves the S&P. It in does. In bull markets, absolutely. the NASDAQ will outperform the S&P. Yep. And, you know, and absolutely. So, uh, yep. Pretty so that, cool. That, yeah, that may or may not happen. But, that, you know, at, at right now, I think that's a logical conclusion that yes. we may get that pullback. And, and now how to identify that pullback as we'll go on the shows, you know, in the next – week or two, whatever, right. wherever this pullback starts, maybe it won't get there, maybe it will. But if it does get there, you'll have to have panic in the ticks and trend. We'll discuss that when we get that pullback, if right. we indeed get that pullback. And we'll help identify, you know, through the put call ratios. And actually, the trend is my favorite tool as far as panic totally. is concerned. But, and, and um, you know, folks, but, okay, if you, if you missed the workshop that Tim did, it was an amazing workshop, about identifying, you know, the lows that were out there, um, you know, <laughs> uh, he went through all of these. Uh, so it's really cool, man. Because you know what's going to be amazing, Tim, is that if we only get a point, point three eight two pullback and you have panic, it's like amazing when you think about it, right? But that's what's happened in the last couple pullbacks. They think it's the end of the world, man. Do you know what I mean? And the panic came in pretty quick. It seems like it came in pretty quick, you know? Yep, yep, it yeah. did. Um, so... 
Yeah, we're, just, we're gonna have some music here in about we are just seconds, stay so. right there we're gonna be coming right back folks we're gonna get, we get uh, three more charts to go through uh dow right now uh up 369 nasdaq's uh, down 104 s&ps are off three and a half stay right there folks we'll come right back Welcome back, folks. Tim Oitano over there. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. And don't forget, folks, you get hold of Tim any trading day at ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. That's ord hyphen oracle.com. We're on the TLT uh, VVIX chart, Tim. All right. We're, we're kind of done with that. That's what okay. may develop in the coming days. So that's what, um, anyhow, that's a possibility. So okay, so on. now I got the, uh, oh, good. Okay, let's have some fun here. We got the... Uh, RSI with the GDX, and uh, here we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, we presented this chart on the uh, your program before. Yes. Back in August 23rd, I, uh, this chart's actually pretty good. It, it, but, yeah, I wanted to go through it one more time. But the blue lines on the chart above uh, are the times when the RSI falls RSI of the bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX um, ratio when the RSI falls below 30 then closes above 30 yes are uh, when, when are triggered buy signals for this for this method and it works pretty well but I want to point out back on August 23rd that ratio or the RSI of this ratio fell below 30 closed above 30 which is a buy signal and right after it went black below 30 again and triggered another buy sale on October fourth. Okay. So, uh, so the point the point was is very unusual to get a double buy signal. Actually, the last time that happened was in two thousand twenty two. Something similar that happened. So, you know, the signal was was accurate, but it gave another buy signal right after it. Yes. So you had to you had to set through some pain before you got another bicycle so it called a low in august and it called another low in october the october low uh, obviously was a better one to catch because um you know it screamed down and screamed right back up right so anyhow i just want to point that out but it is on a bicycle now uh we've got the trend going up these signals sometimes last a year not sometimes longer uh so let's flip the uh, uh chart number seven okay there and we go. This is kind of where we are right now. So the bigger trend is up. Uh, you can see the August low came in around 28 or so. And, yes. And the October low comes in 26 or so, 25, something in there. But the whole pattern uh, is, in my opinion, the head and shoulders bottom. The head was the October low. The uh, the August low was the right left shoulder. Yes. And the right shoulder was the November low. And you had a sign of strength through that neckline, which is that blue line right there. So now you have support at uh, 30 because you jumped the neckline. Now that becomes support. doesn't have to pull back down to that neckline, but it could. And, and, and that's, uh, that, that when we were talking this, Tim, that we, we did this on Tuesday, correct? Yeah, jumped. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think right. Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Wide was price spread. Week, market just took accelerated a volume was huge volume too, man. I mean, we ended up with forty, yeah, forty-one million shares, folks. It blew away every one of those swing points too. Thirty-eight was the biggest swing point, and twenty-one. So pretty cool, man. Okay, go ahead. That's really. And yeah. you know, you know what yeah, you want to so pick up out of this, folks. What Tim is saying is that when you do break these, you have to break them with a the sign of strength, so your probability goes higher. Would that be correct, Tim? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you yep. are correct. So yeah, you, you, you busted that resistance zone at thirty. You know, this was like the fourth or fifth time up at yes. that thirty. So to get through it, you can't just go up there and test it on a lighter volume because it ain't going to go through it. You, right. You jump to it with a really a slap in the face to get through it. So now that becomes support. Yep. And the, and the bottom two windows actually, um, the bottom window is the uh, up down volume percent with an eighteen day average. Okay. And uh, I deleted one of those lines at minus ten, but anyhow, when both those indicators are above minus ten you got an uptrend going in the market. And all that blue stuff on the chart is when that indicator, both indicators are above minus 10. I see. And okay. when the indicator is below minus 10 on both of them, that's when all the pink areas are in there. Interesting. So okay. anyhow, you, you got above minus 10 on both indicators back in, you know, looks like right around Thanksgiving time frame. Yes. You know, right. And uh, so it, it, it got a gap up there. Things turn green. And so 
you got another chance to get through that that um, resistance of 30, which it did. And so far, we're in the, the green area, but the blue area. And so, in my opinion, you know, as long as those two indicators hold above minus 10, the uptrend should continue. You know, uh, pretty it's cool. kind of pulling back now. It kind of curled over. I think it was just a, a normal consolidation. I don't think right. uh, we're going to pull back much. I guess at worst case, we may pull back at 30. But, uh, you know, sometimes when these rallies go, they don't let you in. Particularly uh, so, in the gold market, Tim, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially in the bull market. Yeah. So on a short-term basis, intermediate-term basis look really good. What the next chart Okay, I have really the next one up. Yep, here Let's we go. to that one. Okay, I have it up. All right, this this chart. Now, this defines the bigger trend. It doesn't, it doesn't attempt to make the... Uh, to, every wiggle in the market just gets you along uh, 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 gets, it gets you along after the lows and gets you out after the tops yes but it gets you in the main trend right so you want this chart in your favor and so it, it gave a sell signal back in 2012 and it stayed short or stayed out of the market all the way into 2016 low got you in a little bit late but got you in kept you in for 2016 to 2018 got you out in that sideways kind of consolidation. Okay. Got you back in at 2019, which is the next blue line. Yep. I kept you in for another year and a half and got you out in, uh, looks like about 2000, January 2021. You got out and pretty much you've been out since 2021. And now you're right at that mid Bollinger band to get a signal. You need a close above the mid Bollinger band on both of them. Okay. So, so all those, the, the blue and red lines are time when both those indicators close above the mid-Bollinger band. That's the blue line. When it closes below the mid-Bollinger band, that's the red line. So this mark, this one picks out the trend. And most of these trends, you know, you got trends from 2012, 2016, that's four years. Most of these trends are at least a year and a half. And, and it got you out in 2021, just about ready to get you back in 2000. And you know maybe this year or first part of next year, but once it gets it gets long, it's it stays long for you know years. No, which is year, which is so cool, man. Years. No, I, I get it. It's almost like a point and figure deal, folks. Point and figure, you know, is, is a good system, but it gets you in later, gets you out later. But it's a very accurate type of system. Interesting, man. Yeah, because hey, listen, when we look at the is it, you know, the GDX in general, it's only at 30 and the high was 66. So, I mean, it's like, okay, you know, this is... You well, what I'm thinking is, you know, I, I wish I had this going back further, but it's on GDX. So, but I like to see it back to, you know, like, 1980. I think we're in a time frame uh, where this chart could turn up, because we've been going, according to this chart, momentum and the up, up down volume and advanced client indicators have been, in general, weak all the way since 2021. Yes. So, in general, you had a hard time making money over the last three years. Yep. And gold stocks, they really didn't have them perform. Absolutely. Once these, once these things turn up, uh, it could be like a good, uh, like 2000. Remember back 2000? Oh, listen, I, 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 there's no doubt, folks. And what ends up happening, you know, the longer that you build cause, folks, the higher that you can go. And that's what uh, Tim is saying, that this is a three-year deal that we're going through. Well, listen, Tim, it's always a pleasure, man. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right, thank you. Thanks, Love man. You. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back.